your whole numbers, the ones that you like to work with most. Integers throw in whole numbers plus their opposites. Rational numbers include all of these things, anything that can be expressed as a fraction of a integer over a whole number, right, is a rational number. So our mixed numbers, our terminating decimals, our repeating decimals, fractions, integers, whole numbers, all of those are rational, right? And then we've got our irrational numbers, things like pi, that if they're expressed as a decimal, they do not repeat and they do not end, right? All of those kinds of numbers are the real number system. In Algebra 1, all of your answers will be real numbers. And you have to know that any one of these types are numbers that we're going to be working with, OK? I'm not going to limit us to whole numbers and integers. Two main symbols that we use to represent comparisons between real numbers, and they would be the equal sign would represent balance. Whatever is on the left of the equal sign has the same value as what is on the right of the equal sign. And then we have this symbol here, which would represent unbalance. Okay, one point down here represents a smaller thing, and two points over there represents a larger thing. Okay, so balance and unbalance. Now, of course, there are some other symbols we use, but all of them are built from the two that I showed you initially. This unbalanced symbol is saying the smaller number is on the left. We could spin that symbol around and then have the larger number on the left. We can combine either of these symbols with the balanced symbol to say, for example, here, the number here is not greater than the number here. So it can be less than the number or it can be balanced with that number, but it just can't be greater. Same kind of idea here. The number on the left can be bigger, it can be equal, it cannot be less than the number on the right. All right, and if we put a slash through an equal sign, we're saying two things are not equal. We don't say which is greater or which is less. They're just not equal to each other. If I'm going to model or represent numbers, real numbers on a number line, a few things I have to be aware of. We traditionally count from left to right, so smaller numbers on the left, larger numbers on the right. That means when I'm comparing numbers, if I have a number to the left, it's a smaller number. If I have a number to the right, it's a larger number. Keep in mind, when you're dealing in negative territory, the numbers count backwards. Okay, negative five is smaller than negative one, right? Couple symbols that you should be aware of if you're gonna model things on a number line. The first thing would be a closed circle. If I want to put a point at four and a half, I, if I wanna represent four and a half, halfway between four and five, I can represent that using a closed circle, a circle that is shaded in, All right? That's A is 4.5. If I want to represent a range of values, for example, everything between 16 and 18, I shade the number line. So that's everything between 16 and 18. At the ends of my shading, I have a choice to either include the endpoint or exclude the endpoint, right? So if I wanted to say you have to be older than 16, 16 is not included, then I would use what's called an open circle at 16, okay? A circle that is not shaded in. If I want to include 18, so you have to be older than 16, but you can be 18 or less. That's the word. Then I would, again, use a closed circle to say 18 is included. 18 is allowed in my set. All right, so exclude with an open circle. Include with a closed circle. Closed circle represents the equality. 
shading a line represents allowable values in my situation. All right, and then obviously the unshaded parts of the line represent values that are not allowed. Okay, so again, if I wanted to say all of the numbers that are bigger than negative three, let me shade them. Negative three is not bigger than itself, so I would exclude that, but all of these things are bigger than negative three. And in fact, even the numbers that I don't show on my line, that's what this arrow means, there's more numbers up there, even those are included, they're bigger than negative three, so I would even shade the arrow to say everything up there. All right, this represents all of the numbers bigger than negative three. Let's look at some more comparisons on number lines, see if you can notice the patterns in symbols, mathematical symbols, and the shading that shows up. And then some more examples. Feel free to hit pause if that helps you to locate the patterns in these comparison models. Right, so smaller numbers on the left, larger numbers on the right. That means when I'm comparing numbers, if I have a number to the left, it's a smaller number. If I have a number to the right, it's a larger number. More likely you're going to compare numbers digit by digit, which means if I want to know which one of these is larger, I'm going to change both of them into decimal format. So you can simply use a calculator to do that. Square root of 3 is approximately 1.732. And there's more numbers after that. And one and five sevenths is going to be one point. If I want to change this into a decimal, I just have to do five divided by seven. And we've got one point seven one four two. Okay, and then comparing decimal by decimal just means I look at each digit until I get to a digit that does not match. So, one and one, they match. 0 0.7, 0 0.7, they match. Three and one, they don't match. And that's where I can stop looking. So three doesn't match one, three is bigger than one. That means this number is gonna be bigger than that number. Okay, that's comparison decimal by decimal. It does not matter how many digits are in a number. You could have, in fact, you do have infinitely many digits in this number and that one. Um, the question is the first digit that is not the same, which, which one has a larger number in that place. Now there's also a method you could use with a calculator. You could use subtraction to compare two numbers. So for example, uh, 2.7 and the square root of six, you could figure out which one of those was bigger using subtraction. Uh, you could also use division to find out which one is bigger. I'm not going to explain how to do those things to you, but if you're willing, play around with this. A couple different numbers and see if you can come up with a pattern. How can I compare numbers using subtraction? How can I compare numbers using division? All right, if you do come up with that, let me know. If I want to put numbers in order from smallest to biggest or from biggest to smallest, I'm basically doing a comparison again and again and again. Probably the simplest way for you to do it will be to, again, anything that's not already in decimal format, get it into decimal format, and then do your digit by digit comparison. So 17 divided by 3, this will be negative 5. 
repeating. Six and one eighth, one divided by eight. This will be negative six point one two five. Square root of thirty three. This will be negative five point seven four four. Okay, now these are negative numbers, so remember, larger negative actually means less than number. So if I put these from least to greatest, my negative sixes are going to be smaller than my negative fives, and negative 6.2 will be smaller than negative 6.1. So this is my smallest number right here, my least number. 6.2 followed by this one negative 6 and 1 eighth okay then negative 5.8 smaller than negative 5.7 which is smaller than negative 5.6 so negative 5.8 comes next then negative square root of 33. And finally, my largest value in this set is negative 17 thirds. Okay, so these are in order. Notice that when I put my final answer down, um, I use the original values, not the decimal approximations. Okay, try to do that when you're putting numbers in order. Uh, yes, turn mixed numbers, improper fractions, proper fractions, square roots, other types of things into decimal approximations or decimal equivalents, but then when you write your final answer, uh, use the values as originally shown. At this point, you should be able to use mathematical symbols appropriately to compare real numbers. You should be able to recognize those mathematical symbols when you see them. You should be able to model comparisons on number lines. You should be able to compare multiple numbers in order to put them in order from smallest to biggest or reverse that from biggest to smallest. And we also threw in the beginning some language regarding what we call different types of real numbers. So recognize that when you see and hear it.